Happy New Year, everyone. So they say, New Year, New Us. But I still don't have a voice and I am still pressed for time. So I think that we are kind of in the same loop year that we always were. Hello, beautiful bookworms. My name is Katarina and welcome to my channel. I am sorry if you can't hear me because I have no voice. And so because of that, this is going to be a very quick video. So today we're going to be doing my December wrap up, which was last year, everyone, because we are now in 2022, if this comes out in the date that I expected to, we never know. So very, very quickly, I read ebooks or eARCs. So every eARC that I'm going to talk about is kindly given to me by Nick Alley and my reviews and content are always my own as usual. I have also read another book that I had here in the house and then I read two comics and one manga. So let's get into it. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the manga. I have been dying to get to this manga for a while now, and that is Magus of the Library, Volume 4. This is by Mitsu Izumi, and this is basically a story for the lovers of books, but also a fantasy, an epic fantasy, apparently, story. It has a lot of meta content, and it has a lot of situations that I didn't think it was going to have, and the ending of this volume just made me scream what really out loud which I can't right now because I have no voice but it was incredible it made me want to read it even more for those of you that don't know this is a story about this boy named Theo Fumis he is a mixed race and in the place where this is set that is kind of a problematic situation <clears throat> so of course there's going to be trigger warnings for racism xenophobia and other unpleasantries but in this world, there is this library, there is sort of like the Library of Alexandria, where books are protected and explored, and where knowledge is supposed to be safe kept, and Theo learns the value of reading and how reading can unite cultures and people, and he really wants to work as a Magus in that library, and as a Kefna, actually. They're called Kefnas, I think, but then there's the Magus of the library, whatever. It's beautiful. The art style of this is beautiful. The story of this is, it makes me go to tears every single volume, which is sort of insane. And I knew that this was going to be sort of my favorite manga series from volume one, which never happens. So if that's not something to tell you, go read Mangas of the Library. I don't know what is. Then I read the Joker, issue 8, and this is by James Tynion IV, Gillam March, and Arif Prianto, and a bunch of other people that collaborated with this one. And Joker, issue 9, and this one is also by James Tynion IV. But now the artists and the colors changed, and they are Stefano Raphael and Romulo Fajardo Jr. And... As per usual, I am really enjoying Joker. This is sort of a noir series about Commissioner Gordon and he has to find the Joker because something is up at the asylum, the Arkham Asylum, and people think it's Joker's fault. And a lot of villains from a lot of families of Batman stories are trying to find the Joker as well and kill him. So it's kind of a manhunt and we love it. We are loving to see it. I do believe that the Joker here it's very conscious of what he's doing, and I really like the approach that is not completely, totally insane, but very psychotic. Um, so yeah, I cannot wait to see where this ends. Then, an e-arc that I read was Witch Bottle by Tom Fletcher, and I do believe that came out on November 12th of 2020, which is a surprise for me because I've been uh, given arcs that have come on 2021. But apparently I also have some that already came out, which is pretty cool. So, Witch Bottle by Tom Fletcher. This is a very strange, very weird sort of magical realism horror. So when I was reading it, I got a lot of Haruki Murakami vibes, and he is my favorite author of all time. So it was kind of cool for me to see it reflected on an author that I do believe is maybe American or English. I will have to check that out, so don't take my word for it on it. Um, but yeah, it was it was really incredible. It was kind of creepy, but at the same time kind of weird. And you never really knew what was going on. And you never really knew what was going to happen. It was like the book was divided 
into small short stories that were small short chapters that had to do with the same thing. And it's kind of about the journey of this man and what is actually the thing that is haunting him. Is it a curse? Is it something creepy? Or is it actual past and who he is that is haunting him? I'm not going to answer that because I think the answer will have to be decided by you whilst reading. And I think it's a very strange and fun experience. Also pretty creepy. And I would like to read more of Tom Fletcher's novels. I'm not sure if I'm going to get this one or not. But it was actually an incredible experience for someone that's been having a lot of bad luck with the e-arcs that I get. And I really enjoy this one. Then another e-arc that I read is called Union Bound. And that is by M.L. Philpitt. I think that's how you pronounce the name of this person. And that came out, I believe, around November of 2021. So last year. Um, I don't know the precise date, but this is the end of a trilogy about witches and vampires and shapeshifters and stuff. So I had no idea that this was part of a trilogy when I asked for it. It's also an erotical novel, which I sort of could understand for the cover, but I wasn't totally expecting it to be. It was really fun. So the writing style wasn't amazing, but it was actually an enjoyable novel that you can read independently of the other ones. I, I do believe that if you've read the other ones, you will just have the happiness of knowing where the main characters of the other ones ended up and how it all rounded up because this is a finale completely. Um, but yeah, Union Bound was fun. It's about um, this coven, these two covens of witches, and apparently to keep the power of the coven going, um, like the main uh, children of the head witches have to get married, but they don't want to get married. Uh, one of them, the, the man dude, I don't know the name of, them, of these people, I don't remember, but the man just wants power because he had some unpleasantries going on in his childhood and he just wants power and he wants to lead the coffins and be like the major witch dude. And the female protagonist, she doesn't really care about that, she just wants to study um, in peace and to be in college in peace and to do something for the coven, but she really wants to help the, her parents, well, her mother, because her dad is not in the picture, and just be a good witch. But they have chemistry. There's an age gap, which is a trigger warning for people that don't really like to read age gap. So he's kind of like um, 30s a lot, and she's like 19, 20. I don't remember. So there's this age gap here, maybe 10 years or something. But it's not really... You don't really care about that because the thing with the powers and the witch thingy is what is interesting. And then, of course, the erotica of the situation, which is not... I was hoping for dirtier and creepier erotica, if I'm honest. And I, I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't... I was actually enthralled in the plot and didn't mind reading those parts. So do with that what you will. If the writing is good. Not really, but the plot was interesting and it actually had plot because I'm sick and tired of listening about erotica that don't have plot. At least this one had plot. It wasn't amazing, but it was there. Then I read a book that I had here because I was desperate to get something to take my mind of things. And I read The Fire Child by S.K. Tremaine, which if you remember the last time that I review an S.K. Tremaine book, you, you know what is coming. I mean, I, I cannot hide the face of displeasure while I pick this up. So I thought about reading this because it says a countdown to Christmas. And this is basically a story when you read the back of the book. It's about this woman. She just married this widowed man and he lives in like this Scottish island full of um, mines where people used to die working there. And apparently his wife died because she fell into the mines. And he has this 80-year-old child and the child kind of predicts the future or it looks like it and he tells this new girl uh, that she's going to die in Christmas and she has a trouble story with Christmas as well so it's kind of something is here and you want as or at least I want as a horror reader and a thriller reader I want a creepy child I want this countdown and I want some serious horror vibes of what is going on. But what I got was what apparently S.K. Tremaine always does. 
strange children that don't really represent what children are, apparently. Women that are always, always using the mental health trope to a degree that is hateful. Um, and men that only think about killing their partners for some reason because they cannot talk with them. I have to say that The Fire Child was better than The Ice Twins, which was maybe his first book. I don't know, but it was the first book that I read of his. But the misogyny, the way that our narrator is our female character and she does not sound like someone that considers herself to be female, and feminist, no, not at all, but that's not even the point of this. She's only like, okay, but I have to, I love to fuck this man. I want to give him a child to fix everything uh, because of the death of his wife, his previous wife. And I'm like, that's not, this child is traumatized. This man is a really bad man and you want to, okay, I just have to have sex with him and give him children because that will fix everything. That's not the fucking point. Um, the way that her mental illness was portrayed was terrible and, as per usual, made her guilty of being insane and, because of that, influencing the child and, because of that, leading to the cliffhanger cataclysm thingy that happened in the end, which I cannot, for the life of me, stop portraying people with mental illnesses as if they are dangerous. Yes, they can be, that, that's a fact, depending on their illness, of course, and how they are treated or not treated. But why do they always have to be like the creepy, crazy people? Like, really, that's what, that's what we have here. And I'm sick and tired of this shit. Maybe because I have anxiety and I know how it feels like to be treated as if you were completely insane when you're having a panic attack. But the lengths that this book goes to tell you that this woman is crazy and she should be committed. She should get help. I'm not denying that, but committed and the way that she dialogues with herself is like yeah okay i'm a terrible person because i have this disease and this condition like no please stop with that shit it's time that we move forward and i still have an sk Tremaine book to read and i am not at all expecting it to be anything different than this is but at least this one was better than the ice twins because the ice twins for the fucking love of god i hated that book and then to finalize all of this ranting with no voice that is probably annoying the heck out of you guys, I actually read um, an e-arc called The Origins of Wizards, Witches and Fairies by Simon Webb. And apparently, I do believe that also came out on 2021, ending of 2021, I believe. Um, and I finished reading it. I started on December and I finished reading it in January, like first or second of January, so I'm just going to count it as a December wrap-up because I don't want to talk about that again. It was interesting, it was a non-fiction book about folkloric origins of wizards and witches and fairies and how we see them and how they are, they transpire in the culture and how they are portrayed and why they are. Um, if you've never read anything whatsoever about this topic, it could be a nice approach and it could be pretty amazing for you to pick it up and read it. But for someone like me that already read a lot, uh, because I, I had this phase where I was in love with historical... Wow, it's raining. Okay. I was in love with historical situations and I love to learn folkloric cultures and why things were the way they were. So I read a lot about that. For me, nothing that was here was new. And that's not the author's fault, of course. Um, it kind of is mine because I thought there was going to be more to what I already knew. And it, it just wants a confirmation of what I already knew. So I gave it two stars, 2.5, I guess, because for me it was nothing new, it was interesting, but I felt like it was also a little bit boring because there are parts of the thing that I understand why you're talking about it, but maybe you should put them in a different way because it was just like you were slapping people in the face with this information instead of just progressively making people understand why things were the way they were instead of just here take this information this is what it is do it at what what you please which for me is the worst type of non-fiction and trying to teach someone is is just going like here this is the facts understand them <laughs> without any compelling explanation. But I'm not saying that this book is terrible. I think that if you like 
to know the origins of these characters or portrayals in history and you've never read anything about it, I would advise you to pick it up. It is interesting and it has a lot of good information. It just really wasn't for me. So yeah, guys, I'm so sorry for the quality of this video in general. The lighting just changed because it started to rain. My voice is terrible. But yeah, that's going to be all for today. If you've read any of these books or want to talk about them or want to read them, first of all, I do recommend, if you can, to get Mags of the Library because, of course, Witch Bottle was also a pleasant surprise. Uh, please don't read S.K. Tremaine's books. <laughs> I I'm sorry, I just, I, I don't really think that they're the best example of thrillers and horror. I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, if you want to discuss that with me, I'm always open to people that have different opinions and I'm really sorry if I just criticize your favorite book because that, that's not a point. You can read what you want to read. I, I read terrible things sometimes and I like them, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, guys, that's going to be all for today and happy readings to you all. Also, happy 2022, which let's hope it's not the final chapter of the trilogy of COVID season and we can actually live a bit by the end of this year. Who knows? So yeah, happy readings. Bye.